Hello and welcome back to the Sch Museum. We have a big day ahead of us, but it's a painfully early start. It is half past six and I'm exhausted. How are you, Brad? Yeah, I'm knackered. But as you say, we have a big day coming up, lots of exciting things planned. So I think we're just gonna have to push through. And it's looking pretty cool in here. This is about as full as the Sch Museum has ever been. Lots of the Sch Museum all brightly colored and actually pretty much everything clean at the moment. But the focus of today is what's going on here. As you might have seen, we took the E500 estate over to GT Towing to rent the trailer on which we now have the Clio V6 because today is when the project with this car is truly getting underway. Now it's been quite quiet since I purchased the car and Brad, you and Tom went down to collect it because we've basically been lining everything up. Tom has been arranging loads of stuff because the plan with this isn't just a light service and getting it back on the road. We're doing a lot with this thing, aren't we? I mean, we're pretty much talking full restoration. First step is engine out, which is seems crazy to fully sort of bring that back to life. We've got parts to replace. We've got parts to upgrade. It's having a full overhaul. So today we're actually going to be heading down to SG Motorsport, who did the initial inspection with the car. But as Brad said, it's not just engine out for cam belt and clutch and that side of things. We're going to be upgrading a whole lot. This isn't just going to be a Clio V6. This is going to be kind of like our, I guess, almost team project Clio V6. The full restoration, if you can think of it, we've probably been thinking of it in recent weeks and what we're gonna do with it. But now we're gonna be hitting the ground running. The Clio V6 is such a fun and unusual car. I've not driven my own car up to this point other than putting it up on the trailer and I don't count that because that's not really driving it in the normal sense of the world word. But if you don't know the car, the unusual thing about this is it's a little Renault hatchback and the engine is here. The V6 engine is and it's rear -wheel drive. over the back and it's rear driven. You're not thinking that when you look at this, there's just a little storage shelf up front, but we've got a ton of things for it already, which we've loaded up into the front. The car is going to change visually in terms of the, what's going on underneath the skin. There's a lot to it, but it's loaded up. It's on the GT tra towing trailer. The E-Class is basically ready. And I guess in a couple of minutes, we're going to set off on the drive. It's a very early start to beat the traffic, to get it into the workshop at SG Motorsport and to basically begin all of this. Yeah, this is nuts. Like this is actually <laughs> happening. <laughs> right, let's get cracking on, let's get it out and let's get on the road. Tom's here, he's doing the bollards just at the moment. Um, we haven't yet used the wagon for wagon purposes. We've not had it filled up completely to the brim. We haven't and we're still not going to. <laughs> no, no. Let's see, can I get a bag off through the camera? Awkward camera Magic angles. skills. There we go. Yeah, done it. No Actually, one's... no, I need that in the front because I've got some editing. Brad, so... I'll hit my head on the boot. That's... Sorry, Tim, that's not going in there. After all of that, why not? Let's pop this in. <laughs> I'm assuming because Tom's bag is in the back, I'm calling a shotgun. Whoever goes in the back is having a snooze. Yeah, this is some dodgy camera work. It's okay. Yeah. It's museum, anything goes. We can be very jealous. So let me go and get this started. Yeah, you run around that way. We'll get it on outside um, and then I guess we get hit the road. Pretty much. All right. Nice. Smooth. That was the wrong window action, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm All not right. the first and I won't be the last. Okay, so. Time to tow oh, for time the first to tow. time in a while. Here we go. V6 on the back of the trailer, outside. Yeah, we're ready loaded. For us to hit the road. All of this is set. Big yes. thanks at this stage again to GT Towing with the rental of the trailer, but also a reminder of how it all works because I haven't towed for nearly a year. So, a bit of a recap on that whole process and hooking it all up. Right. Yeah. Let's go to SG Motorsport. At least it's summer and it's kind of daylight already. If it was winter, this would be like cold yeah. and miserable. <laughs> Right, let's, let's go. Let's hit the road. We've found ourselves a route master. Old school. I mean, we're all doing old school right now, so that's an old school London bus currently on the M25 for whatever reason. But I think it's quite fun that we're driving in a 2003 e-wagon pulling a 2004 Clio. Oh, look at that view. Not Tom, <laughs> the, the Clio. Sorry, <laughs> guys. Move out of the way. But the, the cool thing about that is it feels like we've wound back 18 years. It feels like we're back in 2004. You you could have a wagon like this to tow your Clio track car or something. Especially with Route Masters buzzing around, it literally feels like we're back <laughs> in the early 2000s. So basically, this is a cruise at 60 miles an hour 
We're on the M25, we're heading out towards the west. We've got a couple of hours on the road and everything takes a little bit longer, obviously, when you are towing and you have to be a lot more careful of everything as well, all the people around. But let's hope we're early enough that we're actually ahead of traffic. That would be cool if we're ahead of rush hour. I don't know. I don't normally drive around the M25 at this time of the morning. You don't do anything at this time in the morning, <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> other than sleep. So, I mean, in fairness, most of us usually are sleeping at this time of the it, morning. It's, it's one of the side effects of working in the uh, social media internet world is the whole um, being awake late at night, yeah. talking to people in the US. Yeah, it's cool view. Hey, it's all going quite well so far. Can't complain. The old girl is having a, an easy time of it. It actually doesn't feel, I mean, we don't exactly have power, we're not, we've not got full acceleration, but it doesn't feel like it's having to work hard. No, I, I mean, mean, we're just, it's not the G63. No, but you've not had to go super up high up the rev range, you've not had to, you know, from what I can tell, put much throttle in. No. It, it's just. Actually, you know what? Other than when I did my trailer test driving in an instructor's car, I think this is the only other car I've towed with other than the G Wagon. Oh wow. So okay. I've only towed my own Mercedes cars. Brad, this seemed like a good idea at the time. Now all of a sudden I'm starting to question whether he should be towing this. Oh, we'll be okay. He's got more experience than both of us, but No, together. this is true. This is true. Which is <laughs> an announcement like that. I'm like, oh this car's very special to us. Um but yeah, I can't wait to get up to SG and we can go through all of the parts that we have that are gonna be going yes. through. It, it's been loaded up. Yeah. Tom has arranged a ton of different things. Some really cool partners who are supporting this project. Some really cool parts that are going on to that car. And it's definitely going to be something fun. Yeah. Like, we're talking about ideas with it that we can't share too much about yet. And there is some more stuff coming that isn't <laughs> already here, so it, it's only going to get better. It's safe to say it exploded, it ballooned. It went from a, let's just make it like, nice really nice you know let's let's get the car let's do everything that we need to do to make it a car then and, and recondition it recondition the it. word was used and then it's well become. you was out in america and he said it's your baby you crack on i'm not going to get involved just do what needs to be done and i decided it needs some modification along the way so here we go quick update that's cool yeah we have double chinook flying where is it gone there they are flying over the M25 as we reach traffic. <laughs> oh dear. It was inevitable. <laughs> Spotted. So in answer to your question of will we be recognized in this uh, ensemble? Should we say that? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That's good. Then um, the answer is yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. yes. Man in the seven series has seen us and spotted us. That's quite funny. <laughs> I wonder you, if, should we say hello? Yeah, we say hello. Oh, on video. <laughs> No, he's given up. No, we don't want to say hello. <laughs> we, we were just going to compliment you for actually recognising the cars. We thought we were under the radar a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're looking forward to getting it running. Thank you, have a good one. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> it's fun. Just saying how this is the car that stands out. Forget the supercars. It's all about the V6. Yeah, all well, about I didn't the get a chance V6. to say hello to that chap, so hello, sir, because you're probably watching this. <laughs> Not that you can see it, but through the gap. There it is. All right, Spider. R8, and it's the MFG. Yeah, it's the MFG. Um, we won't say any more on that. <laughs> it's the MFG. And we have more traffic. Yeah, every time we pull the camera out, we're in traffic. It, it is literally that way. We've had no traffic since the last clip. We get here and Ways of saying there's a policeman and there's a lane closed, so presumably it's just something. I'll have a look. Let's we'll see what's coming. Probably got some kind of small accident. There actually is a police car. There's various police cars. Oh wow! And something. It's actually like a reason for the lane closure. Let's carry on our way to Britain. Why am I being mass? The seats should not have massage seats. You <laughs> get your hands off. <laughs> <laughs> Up to you what you do with this clip if this is staying in or not. This bit right now is in here, but the bit before that we've had to cut. <laughs> Tom made, Tom made it take a turn for, for the worst. Thanks, Tom. You aren't going to believe this, but every time I look backwards, and I have no idea how they're doing this, I see a car that is driving in reverse as fast as we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's a black Cleo. You know what? Quite often your humour fails you, but I'm going to give you that one, mate. That Thank was pretty you. good. <laughs> it's quite funny. 
seeing the back of a car like right behind you. It's a good sight. <laughs> Just bouncing along behind. Not too much further to go, but up here we have a sign for Castle Coombe Circuit. That would be a fun place to take this car when it's done. I've driven a Castle Coombe only once. That was with my Audi S5 convertible in 2010. Last time I went to Castle Coombe was 12 years ago. Wow. I've been making videos for too long. <laughs> That's a long, long time. <laughs> but yeah, maybe I'll have the Clio there at some point, which thankfully is still on the trailer behind us. You say that like it was, there was a possibility of it not being. <laughs> we strapped it down, it's all safe, don't listen to him. Yeah, we're all good. Slow and steady does it, where are we going? We need some breakfast. We do need some breakfast. It is now just after nine in the morning. I think this car clock is all over the place. <laughs> it is 9.10 right now, yeah. It's actually crazy to think we've been awake for like four hours already. Yeah, oh, it's early. Be a long day. Let's find some breakfast, get to Scott, and then we can start stripping the clear. Well, Scott can start stripping the clear. <laughs> At least the clear, not something else. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not himself, yeah. Uh, early and mornings. <laughs> Here we go, fast forward, and we are in V6, focus, come on camera. V6 heaven once again with our V6. So I guess it's time to get it unstrapped get the ramps out, get it off the trailer, and then basically go straight into the workshop where the work can begin. It's so cool seeing so many. There's a load again, a few random bits, and a Saab turbo. That's pretty cool. But yeah, time to get the clear off and inside to SG Motorsport, ready for its work and to the restoration transformation project to officially begin. It's time to unload. Good reversing skills. I know you are. Thank you. Thanks. Siri is chatting to yep. you. It doesn't understand how you managed to reverse it so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm getting into this completely the wrong way around. Yeah, well, I don't know what I'm watching going on. <laughs> Left foot in first, Tim. <laughs> Let's uh, get a cold start. <laughs> like a dream. Oh. Right, time to get yours. Did you put the handbrake on the Merc? Probably. Yes, I did, actually. Hopefully. <laughs> Here we go. straight off, nicely does it. Nice and easy, and she's off. Great success. My car's so happy to meet all of its friends. Again. <laughs> so happy. Yeah. I'm happy for it. <laughs> Is that weird? Yes. Oh, to be here with all of its friends, you know, its family. Yes. Um, right, we've got to turn it off. It's about to the engine now. Yeah. Um, let's just warm it up so Scott burns himself, right? Is that what oh, it's Oh, you could run it for ages before it gets to a temperature that's going to burn you. You can drive a car and then just leave it 20 minutes and it's okay. Normally. Yeah, we don't want to leave it 20 minutes. <laughs> no, no, no. But Things to do. This is idle. This isn't... Cool. Anyway, onwards. So Tim has found himself behind the wheel of the Clio V6, just going round and round in circles here in Scott's yard. Now I'm gonna, gonna try and get a bit of a zoom. Look at that grin! Okay, let's get a quick word. I shouldn't really do. Let's get a quick word from you, sir. Now, How old is the petrol in here? Uh, probably about three and a half, four years. Um, I'm not gonna count that as driving because it was a grand total of five miles an hour. Cool though, I'm looking forward to it being I'm really looking forward to it being done. That's I, far too. Good, yeah. Well, I mean, I very much... We're going to fight for who gets the actual first drive of this. We're not fighting for that. I, I just get it. I think the owner of the car gets it. Yeah, but it wouldn't be built if it wasn't... No, go go straight into Scott's. Go straight. Go straight into Scott's. Okay, and I'll walk back. Yeah, there we go. Bye. Time to... I guess if you just want to pull it straight inside. Whether we've got the angle is another story. Once again, lovely little collection of customer cars down here at SG Motorsport. Life of three point turns in a Clio V6. So yep, time to get this on the ramp and time for work to commence. We are now back. We just popped out for, well, people don't actually know, but we went out for some lunch. Breakfast. So breakfast, we breakfast were getting lunch. hungry and sleepy. I fell asleep almost in the car a couple of times. 
Yeah, two and a half hours sleep is not a good thing. You didn't thing. almost fall asleep in the car, you okay. fell asleep in I the car. I was asleep in the car times. when you came back from the petrol station, <laughs> yeah. But we're back down at SG Motorsport and the Clio is looking better, rear bumpers removed, we're missing a few things. There's still an engine currently, but fairly shortly I'm sure that's coming out. It's and obviously out. we're joined by Scott once again. Clio V6 expert. <laughs> Straight on with the show. Everything coming off quickly and finding the usual problems that come from a not perfectly built car. Hand built. Hand built. Perfect, perfect wording. Hand built, as Clarkson said. Hand built is just another way of saying it will fall apart. <laughs> Although this one's struggling to come apart, but that's another problem you get with this. So, obviously, this is going on and we'll leave Scott's track on. We have a table full of stuff and we parts do. and we goodies do. so obviously when we came down previously to see scott and bring the car up and he did the inspection there were a number of things that were highlighted which were going to need to be replaced and we've got look at this a few replacement parts laid out just a couple it's like car christmas it's like we're couple, in your so. shop what yeah. are you what are you selling us sir <laughs> <laughs> yes so i mean <laughs> let's you go, start oh, you go in the upside as well here. yeah let's start over here with and i think we did briefly show this at some point when it was uh delivered. Here is the water pump and timing belt kit we have from the guys at carspares.co.uk along with the uh, crankshaft pulley which again is cracked which is a fairly common problem on these so that will need to be replaced. Then we have the auxiliary belt kit which we managed to pick up so again you've got the tensioner there that goes with that so that will be able to get replaced and that one won't be snapping and we can keep some keep some cooling in, in the car. Um, we move on to some genuine service parts, which are actually getting quite difficult to get hold of anything yeah. genuine nice Renault yeah. for these now. So yeah, we've managed to pick up a few of those. Because just to rewind, back when this car was being delivered, nobody ever thought that in 20 years time, there would be massive demand no. and there just aren't spare parts, yeah. which is why Scott is a wizard at this yeah. and knows hundreds of the UK's 354 cars because it's hard. It's and a difficult world. Means he also knows where to get parts from. But moving on, this is Ram something that actually, yep, yeah, this is something that's very needed. This is actually a gasket for the aerial on the roof. So ours is currently perished and completely gone. And I've been quite scared of washing it anywhere yeah, near the roof water because goes in the roof liner. water goes in there, you know, yeah. water in the roof lining, and there's not much you can do. So that one is to be replaced, which again, it's comical how such a small part can cause such a find. big problem. Yeah. Should we go on to these? Um, some power yeah, flex. We do have some power flex bits and pieces. So there's uh, bits and pieces. Sorry, we've said it again. Um, so here we have the ones. No, it's going to be this one and this one. Here we have the bushes for the front uh, anti roll bars. So we've got inner and outer. So those will go onto there. This one is the lower engine mount, small bush. There's a couple of those. If they leave, that is the other one of them as well. And then here, crucially, this is something I'm really quite happy about. We have the camber adjustable bushes for all four corners. So at some point, we're going to be able to dial a bit more of a setup into this, throw some extra negative camber at it, and maybe go and do a track day. Maybe we have to do a before and after and Let's see, how we see what happens. But yeah, so we've got those as well. Minor thing, but important thing. Very important yep. thing. Boot lid struts. <laughs> stop the decapitation every time you go yeah. anywhere near the boot and I mean, it falls down on your head. Even here now it has to be held up, because otherwise yeah. it's going to fall down. Yeah. And then crucially, I'm sure many of you guys would have seen when we took the C63 Black Series over to the guys at GAD Tuning. They sorted us out with a BMC air filter, which made huge differences. And I think all of us here, I think, are pretty sold, convinced, converted. Converted so, so yeah. much that we even have the BMC air filters. <laughs> and that's yeah, on the Merc key. On the Merc key. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to get a filter for that at some point. But we have BMC air filter for that. So once again, I think maybe this will have to go to Anthony at GAD at some point, just to see exactly what of a difference that does make. Um, and speaking of Scott being a wizard and being able to source various bits and pieces of this, it's actually with his contacts that we've managed to have the bits that we've got here. So if we start here, these are from the guys at Pure Motorsport. So we've got some uh, new top mounts that are going to be going on the suspension as well as the bump steer kit, which just improves that steering feel a little bit more, which in something like this, well, you want that, right? You want to know what the front wheels are doing, what way they're pointing and whether they're going to let go of grip at some point soon. And we, then we have reluctor rings. We have the reluctor rings ABS ring. So again, very common problem on these is they swell up, they crack, they don't work. You end up with ABS lights on the dashboard and more crucially, no ABS, which in an emergency situation, you 
probably wouldn't want. So these have been supplied to the guys, to us by the guys at Reluctor Rings, and these are all handmade in the UK as well, which is just a cool little touch. Yeah. And Scott was saying that it, they can make this pretty much for anything. So. Yeah for the E500 if we needed it, rather yeah. than going to Mercedes and paying probably a anything, large amount. Anything that has the ABS rings on, they will be able to sort you out. Fresh from the car. price and an ABS ring. Yeah, and you'll be able to keep stopping safely where you need to. Moving on, we have, I think, the next most important thing, which we know is going to need replacing at some point, a new clutch. So the guys at Black Diamond Performance are supplying us a refurbished clutch, which is going to be as good as brand new, really. You won't be able to tell the difference. And if we're going for a clutch, you then need a flywheel. So the guys at TTV, once again here made in the UK, are supplying us, this is just an example one that Scott has, we will be getting a brand new one, but they're supplying us their lightweight flywheel. So this is five kilos, I believe? Five and a half kilos. Five and yeah. a half kilos. Versus 14 for the standard part. <clears throat> yeah. that so is a massive ridiculous. saving. Yeah. <laughs> and again, it's not just mass, it's moving mass yeah. within the car. So that is gonna make a huge difference. And Not actually, only to wait, but feel. Yeah. Like it's going to rev up beautifully. 100%. And, and last time I was here off camera, Scott did briefly take me out in a car that had one of these flywheels. And well, that's the reason why it's here right <laughs> now. Because I just said there's no way we can go back to the original. It, it, again, it doesn't rev up slow, but it's certainly not as quick as when you've got that on board. So I think we've got quite the, quite the selection of parts going on here. We've got a great assortment of parts. And yeah. Plenty more to come. And you there know, is more to come. This isn't everything. So yeah, we'll, actually... we'll obviously go through things in a little bit more detail in, in due course, but it's a huge thanks to all of the partners who have been part of this project yeah. because yeah. This, is, this is really exciting. You know, we've been able to track down some very hard to find parts yes. and we've got some great companies here um, helping us out and being part of them all as well. And particularly Scott, who's doing the work here to, to get everything, to get anything out to install that stuff. Yeah. yeah, and hopefully this goes to show that when I said it's not going to be quite a standard <laughs> Clio, this should give you an idea. Yeah. But once again, nothing extreme. You know, it's all OEM plus, as I said before. It's just taking what was already there and just slightly improving upon that, yeah. which Perfect. I think is going to make a good car. And that's just part of the process. Yes. <laughs> There's more to it. Have we actually told them what's happening at the end no, of the day? No, no. Okay. I'm, I'm, not really. I'm not going to say anything then. Going with it. These sound quite hard to get off. <laughs> That's the look of a man who's French, like... French rust. Yeah, French rust. That's the look of a man who's like, why is it doing this? So I believe this is exhaust. 50,000 miles, full service history. Yeah, one of those. Good progress. Rear brakes in full force. We have front brakes. I'm sure we'll do some kind of refurb on the calipers, etc. And we have a broken spring, I believe, which is this side. So now the wheel is off. Yeah, it's got a broken spring. It's kind of fun. Saying that, it's not actually kind of fun because it's a broken spring, but kind of fun that we have a broken spring in the same position as the standard clear, the silver one. All good? I'm going to make some noise now. Go on, make some noise. It's not too much noise. Ben Pack have done a good job with these. This is how Scott works on a clear V6, or how you need to work on a clear V6. So. It's demonstration time. <laughs> Nothing to censor, luckily. This is um, this would be my place for the next half an hour. Yeah. So this is how it's done. You basically climb all the way in the car, and then in 30 minutes' time, which for you guys will be a few seconds or a few minutes, we will have an engine ready to come out. That's right, yeah? Engine will be ready to come out in about half an hour or so. Yeah, half an hour. Spot on. So is this the sort of engine stand that is used to... Yeah, yeah, so it, it, it lift out on that. And uh, we lift the, lift the body shell up, leave the engine, and then uh, we can work on the engine there. Interesting. And then just over here we have the whole rear subframe essentially, which is a very sort of squared off looking, I don't know what I was expecting, but it's a very squared off looking part. Agricultural. Yeah, yeah, lots of straight lines and sharp edges, but that is the rear subframe that will go back in. So obviously we can have a rolling chassis because the car obviously has some more exciting plans coming soon. So once the engine's out, subframe back on, wheels on, and then the trailer just around the corner can go, well, we can put the clear back onto it with the winch. 
and these stuff will stay here with Scott ready to be fitted up to engines, etc. etc. So very shortly, engine will be coming out. We should be able to lift this up. Obviously, it's a slow process, just make sure that everything's in the right place. But the engine is essentially going to come straight out as the shell of the car lifts straight off, which is cool. So it's just double check, make sure everything is not being caught and lifting, and then we have a big old mess. Pretty cool. How mad is this? How mad is this? Just like that. That is the whole engine out the back of the V6. We have a shell. We have a shell of a car and a V6 engine now on this little tray stand. Just here, ready to be worked on, refreshed, restored. And then in the not too distant future, this will go back in as a nice new engine, essentially. Just to start preparing for later, we found the towing eye cover. No, not the towing eye cover. We found the towing eye hook, which bit WD-40 just in the hole, just in case there's any rust or whatever else in there. You never know with this thing. And we can screw that in, leave it in, ready to get it onto the trailer when that, or when the work is back. A little bit stiff going in, but I think that works. This is what we're doing for a thumbnail. <laughs> Tim is inside the V6, or in the, Tim is in the engine bay of the Clio V6. Happy in there? I think it's gonna be much slower now. It's gonna be much yeah. slower with him powering it rather than the V6. Literally, it's like the um, thingy's car. What's it called? Flintstones. That's it, it's like the yeah. Flintstones. We have Go created on. a Flintstones car. Run. No, don't, we don't wanna come off the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right, let's get, this, first gear. Let, let's get this thumbnail. V6 engine, should we 150? <laughs> <laughs> this is just strange. Time to pull the clear V6 out. How light is it? Seems... I mean, Scott's pushing it on his own with no problem. Yeah. Quite light. Scott's done it before. Yeah, we may need you to well, stop it. Muscle, you might need me to stop it. He, Scott is pure muscle, yeah. I'll come this end and just... Right, so time to get this round and lined up. I guess. Um, I'm going to pop the camera down, get this on, and then uh, we will join you shortly. I'm holding a camera while driving, except I've got no engine, so I'm not really driving, as <laughs> Brad's doing all the work to winch this back up. And my job is to drive it slowly and carefully. There we go. We're being lifted up. I think they're worried about how low the front is, but we're managing. We got it on before, so we should be able to get it on again, I hope. Although we're forwards this time because of the lack of weight back there as we've got some stuff dripping. I think I've got the easier end of this bargain. All I have to do is hold the steering wheel straight in a car which now has all the trims and everything removed, ready to be done. This is where there's a temptation to turn it, but that would go wrong. We need it lined up out here. Make sure we get it perfectly straight up onto the trailer, ready for the onwards journey. Inception. We've got Tim's angle and what? my angle. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, don't stop, keep going. I heard you talking, I was like, what? We have Inception, but this is pretty much perfect. Thanks, Tom and Brad. Hard work to do this. <laughs> Here we go, all strapped down, locked and loaded. Do you know something? In this direction, I'm going to be looking in the mirror and this guy's going to be tailgating me the whole way. Yeah, like literally sitting right up the back of the Merc. <laughs> Do you know what that joke was quite funny first time around? Okay, okay. Not so much now. Okay. So we've just done all our final safety <laughs> checks, checking the breakaway electrics, car yeah. strapped down, all four corners. We've left the winch attached as well. Lighter this time. A lot lighter, yeah. All Thanks. Do good. That man right there. Yeah, and his lovely Saab. We have to talk about his Saab, but his Saab is very, very cool. Scott, thank you very much. Right. We are, uh, thank you. we're going to hit the road. Yeah, we'll, best, mate. we'll see you and, very uh, soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, back we'll be see, back. Be in touch. See, how, uh, see what they say at the body shop. We'll see what your reaction is <laughs> to the new colour when we bring it back, which we haven't. Yeah. New colour. You know that's guys. the first time we've actually ever said that there's yeah. a new colour. Just oh, like I mean, that. Sorry, I ruined it.
<laughs> new, new colour coming soon. Part of the you guys are going to find out very shortly because that's where we're heading next. Yeah. But that will not be today. That will be the next video. So <laughs> stay tuned. Fun and games. As if the day couldn't get any longer, our journey home is like this on the F25. Traffic, traffic, and more traffic. Can we make the joke again? There's so much traffic that behind us, there's a, uh, a black Renault Clio tailgating us. Yeah, it, it's quite crazy. In my, in my rear view, all I can see are the headlights and the grill. It's right behind us. Yeah. And it's actually on forward this time, so obviously putting it on with the engine in, we had to do it in, on, on backwards so that the weight was over the axles from the rear. But also for the winch, just easier. And it makes so much difference if you think about it. It's significantly lighter, that is now not a particularly heavy load. You can feel it's lighter driving the car. Yeah. Um, but it's been a very chilled out drive. Yeah, we're making progress just slowly. Um, it's not ideal. Yeah. But it's one of those that it kind of is what it is and you just have to go with it. But today has been amazingly productive uh, to get the engine out of the car, to discuss so many things about the changes and to set so many plans as well. Uh, I think the plan is a combination of some of us will come back to catch up with Scott and to see some progress and see parts being changed, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I think just keep sort of eyes on the build and the processes and, and what we're doing just to feel a part of it as much as we can. And meanwhile, while we still have the trailer from GT Towing rented, we're going to go and drop off the car. Yeah. As alluded. Yeah. So that's all. For Working something for to do with colours, which will be yeah. interesting. I'm sure the comments are just going to be do it this colour, do it this, do it that. We have an idea. Wait and see. Yeah. Wait and see very soon and all shall be revealed. And here we are. The Clio V6 has now returned to the Schmuseum. Tim's just backing that one in now. I mean, how cool does this setup look together as well? Absolutely amazing. And the E500 has done the job absolutely perfectly, just as we intended it to, right Tim? Perfect. Sorry, he's concentrating. I shouldn't yeah, really yeah. distract him right now. Let's not crash a trailer into a lap. No, or a Ford GT or an XJ220 or anything else we happen to have locking around in here. Well, that does bring us to a close for today. The first real episode of the full works of the project Clio V6. We're beginning here, having taken it, now back without an engine, which is slightly odd because you can actually see straight through and out the floor of the car, but it's in good hands with Scott. We're gonna be going back to check on the progress with that while we take the body to start the visual changes, some big changes, some stuff we're really looking forward to sharing in the next episode, but there's so much to do with this car. It's gonna be a really exciting project. Tom has worked a lot with many different companies behind the scenes. A huge thanks to all who are involved in doing this. But for today, we're exhausted. It was such an early start. We didn't sleep a whole lot, so we're gonna wrap it up there. Thank you as always for joining us on this project. Until next time.